What I want to do today is go over work energy, which is chapter 3b in Merriman Craig. It's chapter 14 in Hibbler. And generally, what I really, I just really want to talk about the principal work of energy, systems of particles, which kind of within, within the book uh, Merriman Craig is part of chapter four, conservative forces and power and efficiency. And I'll mention right from the beginning that power and efficiency are not um, are not covered directly in the course, but I think it's one of those useful topics that's worthwhile sort of throwing in uh, into these lecture series. So again, I have these two cartoon figures. One of them is marching up with a weight and as a result is doing work. The other cartoon figure is moving to the left and the weight is acting downwards. And in this case, that figure, the second figure moving in this direction over here, is not doing any work. Work is defined as a displacement along the direction of force. So here I have a particle, and the particle's right here, and another particle over here. Now, in terms of this case, if the particle travels along this path, there's work done. In this case, because the particle is traveling horizontally and the force is acting vertically, it's at 90 degrees and it's not in the direction of, of, of the displacement. So work is defined as a displacement along the direction of force. And it has, it's, it's set up uh, as U, so DU equals the force dotted with dr. So if the force and the direction are at 90 degrees to with, the, with each other, they go to zero. These are vector quantities, but the result is a scalar. And that's one of the nice things about dealing with uh, work energy. You switch from going to a work uh, or vector problems, which you did in chapter two and three, in 3a in Merriam and Craig and 12 and 13 in uh, Hibbler to now a problem that might be easier to describe in terms of final positions. So consider a particle that's traveling along a horizontal path. Work done, if I just sort of simplify the term I had just now, it is going to be du equals f, the force in this case, acting along the uh, the travel path, which is going to be ds cos theta. So you can either be f cos theta or ds cos theta. Uh, but either way, one component of that has to be aligned with the other. And so, for example, here you have force tangential and force normal. No surprise there. Tangential forces travel along the path. And in t coordinates might be really a nice system to use when looking at these problems. This is the component of force acting along the path or the component of path acting along the force. The units are generally joules, newton meters, and you're going to get in trouble with all sorts of things later on with momentum, but just get sort of, except for now that you have these units of joules. If you have a force traveling along like this, goes from position one to position two, you can do the integral. And so you have du one to two, and equals one to two of f cos theta ds. So work one to two then is f cos theta s2 minus s1. Hey, this is really nice because it's, it, especially with constant forces, it's one that would, in this case, it's a constant force f. Um, it's going to be one that's easy to sort of calculate because it only depends on where you started and where you ended up. We're going to find out later this is a conservative force, but as a, as a weight travels from position one to position two and traverses a vertical distance h, we can do the same thing. And so work one to two is work one to two, one to two of fx dx, work one to two of fy dy. Now in this case, there's no x force, even if there was, it would be a sort of, uh, it would be traveling along this red line here. So work of gravity is going to be one to two minus mg y2 minus y1. So the work done from going from position one to position two is going to be negative work of the value minus mgh. Kind of makes sense 
you got to lug it up the hill, you're going to you're going to expend energy, and that kind of translates to work. Spring forces. That's something we've talked about in the last chapter, and I have put to a, together a video uh, on spring forces generally. And you can have three cases, stretch, relax, compressed. And stretch just means, say, stretch by distance delta x, compressed by distance delta x. And we've talked about the forces as being minus k delta x. You can have force of the spring. So as soon as you compress the spring, the force wants to sort of push out. If you stretch the spring, it wants to pull back in and return to that relaxed position. And if it does that, you can sort of write, well, force of the spring is equal to minus k delta x. Work 1 to 2 is 1 to 2 of minus k delta x. Integrate, and k is usually constant. In this course, it's generally constant. And you can say minus 1 half k x2 squared minus x1 squared, and work 1 to 2 equals 1 half k x1 squared minus x2 squared. So total work done, if you want to flip the signs, is just flipping these terms around. Both of, that, that becomes really important in terms of what you're looking at and how you're solving these problems. Um, there are forces that do no work. So for example, reaction at a frictionless surface. So if I push this block and it's frictionless, there's no, uh, there's no force of friction. Sorry, the force of friction is equal to zero and therefore the work done is equal to zero. The trickier one is rolling without slip. So force of friction does not equal zero. However, this ball or this point has zero velocity, so it doesn't displace. And so because of that, and we'll talk more about this relatively soon, this will be chapter five in Merriam and Craig, chapter 16 in, um, actually it's probably 6A and 17 in, um, 6a in, in Merriam and Craig and 17 in Hibbler. So you have the two there, two conditions that are kind of important. But one of the questions that comes out is, is well, you know, you've told us all along that uh, everything in this course is Newton's second law. Well, what does this have to do with anything? And I mean, that's a fair question because uh, you know, you have all of these problems that you've looked at and sort of the stress. And the issue really comes down to how you write this second law equation. So sum of forces equals mass times acceleration and acceleration is V D V D S. So all I'm doing is just sort of taking this expression, that dV dt, and just rewriting it in that form that we were already familiar with V D V D S. What's important here is now I can see that I have three terms that are that I need to keep an eye on, force, velocity, and distance. So if I have a problem with work energy, I'm going to have a problem that's going to result in force, velocity, and distance in there. If I do the integration, so all of my force is tangential in some path, S1 to S2 equals mass times V1 to V2 of VdV. Hey, that's kind of neat. I end up with a term that looks like this, 1 half mv2 squared minus m, 1 half mv1 squared. And I'm going to call that t. That t is kinetic energy, and it's equal to 1 half mv squared. And if I bring over my initial condition to the left-hand side, t1 plus work 1 to 2 equals t2. The other thing is power. Um, again, this is not something we talk about in the lecture directly or in the course directly, uh, but I think it's always useful to have it in mind. Power is the rate of doing work, so du dt. So it's f dotted with dr dt or f dotted with dr dt. And you can see right away, that's velocity. So force dotted with velocity. Power has units of watts, uh, one newton meter per second or one joule per second. Efficiency, we're engineers. We always care about how much money we put into a problem and how much we get out of a problem. And basically, efficiency is output over input, power out over power in, what you get from what you put in. Um, and so when, you, when you're talking to clients, when you're talking to 
uh, people it, at work, you're going to be talking about whether or not there's a benefit. And one of the simplest measures is often efficiency. And if you are me, occasionally you get people who tell you that they get efficiencies of 120, 150% and want to describe their devices to you. Um, and you already should know or expect that you can never ever get above 100% and you probably can't get 100%. So generally, you're looking at much lower output efficiencies uh, for the amount of power or work that you put into a system. Finally, we, we kind of deal with the last bit of uh, the chapter. I think it's 4B in Merriam and Craig, and it's still uh, 14 in Hibbler. You have a system that consists of a group of external forces, F1, F2, F3, and a bunch of internal forces, FBA, FAB, so equal and opposite on each one, FBC, FCB, FCA, FAC. They're all sort of there. They're equal and opposite and collinear. So they align up and they sort of do that. I can take all of these together, sum them up, and I can find the center of mass of the system, and I'll call that big G. And if I add up all of those terms, generally what I do is I sort of add up. Uh, the first set of terms, one half m v squared, uh, sum of external work, sum of internal work, uh, and then the final sort of, there we go, final x, uh, kinetic energy of the system. If I do that, I then have a sum of all of the kinetic energies of all of the particles initially, all of the work done by all of the particles from one to two, whatever one to two positions are. And then finally, all of the final kinetic energy of the system from one to n, the n number of particles, in this case, three. Only external forces do work in most cases. In this course, generally, we treat these as rigid bodies, and, and as such, we often have them going long and collinear, and everything's fine. And so you can write the work of internal forces as Fij dotted with the Ri. This is just your equation. And then combine them and put the dot product Fij dotted with the Ri minus the Rj, which, by the way, is the uh, Ri with respect to J. So you Fij dotted with the Rij. F is the internal force of the system, and we made sort of a substitution where we said Fij equals minus Fji. This requires, in order to be zero, uh, to be Drij equals zero, or the component Drij along Fij must be zero for all particle pairs. And in most cases in this course, it's true. However, there's occasionally one or two cases, and that always kind of causes me trouble, where there is uh, an internal force. So I'm giving here an example where I've defined a system, and I don't often do this sort of system, but a system that consists of two masses on a ramp. The friction between these two forces is now an internal force, but I would have to consider it as it would do non-zero internal work to the system. When it comes down to it, though, I really, really hate work. Um, and so I tend to look at things in terms of conservative forces and gravitational forces and spring forces tend to be conservative. So if I have, go back to the example I did at the beginning, I had a case where I had a uh, particle moving from position one to position two. And I can write that as now sum of initial kinetic energies, sum of initial potential energies, the work of non-conservative forces equals the final kinetic energy of, this, uh, of, the, of, of the particle or the system and the final potential energy of the, sp uh, of, of the circle, or sorry, uh, final potential ener energy of the particle or the system. So now I again have these particles, I have the stretch, I have one half kx squared at both of those positions, I have the initial and final position and I can write them that way. And when you, when I do examples going forward, I will tend to use conservative potential energy uh, to describe things like gravity and spring forces. I'll only use work for friction 
In the course, that's pretty much all the forces we deal with. What's important in this? Work energy is really force, velocity, and distance. And one of the things that you have to do as you start to read these problems and do these things, make sure that you understand where the derivation came from Newton's second law, because that tells you how to get uh, or how to identify the problem. We've talked about power and efficiency, and I think that about covers it. Um,